Uh, we move to item 13 now. We have enough time. Okay. Uh, reflection on the participation of NGOs in the implementation of the convention. Uh, Mr. Curtis, could you please present this item? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, if you could allow me to recall that the committee invited last year the Secretariat and the informal ad hoc working group to reflect in consultation with accredited NGOs on the possible ways in which the participation of NGOs under the 2003 Convention could be further enhanced. This request was made in the context of debates on the identification and definition of advisory functions that the committee wishes to be fulfilled by accredited NGOs. These are expressed as inter alia functions in paragraph 96 of the operational directives. This document highlights the preliminary analysis un undertaken by the Secretariat. The informal ad hoc working group through its report to the committee in item 16 is also reflecting upon the possible ways in which participation of NGOs could be further enhanced in the framework of the convention and how this would be reflected in the accreditation and renewal mechanisms of NGOs. Following the 12th session of the committee in 2017, the Secretariat proposed facilitating the reflection on the role of accredited NGOs through a multi-step consultation process leading up to the 14th session in 2019. This process is supported by, a, by the Fund for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage through the funds allocated under the other functions of the committee. As, as a detailed account of the process is presented in document ith 1813com 13 allow me to only outline some of its main steps. After a launch in April 2018, the consultation process started with preliminary consultations carried out from May to August with the steering committee of the ICH NGO Forum and the co-chairpersons of the informal ad hoc working group. This preparatory step allowed representatives from state parties and from the NGO Forum to exchange on their respective experiences and expectations regarding the accreditation system. In September 2018, an electronic consultation was initiated with a communication sent to all 176 accredited NGOs and 178 states parties to the convention. This consultation aimed to gather ideas and comments on the potential advisory functions to be fulfilled by accredited NGOs and possible ways forward for the accreditation system. A total of 65 accredited NGOs and 33 states parties from all six regions have taken part in this ele electronic consultation. We are still in the early stages of analyzing the responses, which arrived to us on the 19th of October. And based on this very preliminary analysis, 82% of accredited NGO expressed a positive opinion regarding the impact of the accreditation system on their work. That being said, consultation revealed that there are many areas in which the current system could be improved. For instance, around half of the respondents, including accredited NGOs and state parties, considered that the accreditation system should take into account the disparity in size and capacities of NGOs. They also recommended that it should include different types of accreditation to accommodate the various capacities and scope of NGOs. Respondents were, however, split on how these considerations would translate in terms of accreditation criteria and process. As I said, these, these observations are only based on very initial data gathered, but it is already very clear that the heterogeneity of accredited NGOs will lead to a diversity of opinions and suggestions regarding the future of the accreditation system. These might include, among others, the introduction of additional criteria, different types of accreditation, system or specific measures to improve the geographic balance of accredited NGOs. However, a lot of these, uh, mo these measures will depend on what kind of advisory functions the committee would like the NGOs to fill, fulfill. In other words, how does the committee wish NGOs to, contribute, to concretely contribute to its work? Together with the, data, with the debates of the committee at the present session and those of the ICH NGO Forum, 
during its symposium last Sunday. The electronic consultation will feed into the working documents of a consultation meeting to be held at the UNESCO headquarters in the spring of 2019, involving representatives from the ICH NGO Forum and from the informal ad hoc working group. The meeting will mainly be directed at defining the inter alia functions or identifying the inter alia functions of NGOs. At the next session of the committee in December 2019, it is planned that the Secretariat reports to the committee on the outcomes of the consultation meeting. If the proposed redefined accreditation system of NGOs requires revisions of operational directives, the committee may wish to discuss it, this at its 14th session with a view to possibly submitting revised operational directives to the eighth se session of the General Assembly of State Parties in 2020. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Curtis, for presenting the different steps of this reflection process. I open the floor now for debate, and uh, it'd be ideal if we can finish the item before we depart for lunch, because we still have a heavy schedule. So the floor is open for debate. Philippines, Philippines please. Thank you, Madam Chair. For our delegation, the lack of geographical balance in the current NGO network is a cause of concern. As only the accredited NGOs would be involved in the consultation process with states' parties, this would in some sense merely continue the imbalance in the system. As indicated on page two of the document, the co-chairs of the ad hoc working group had a good informal brainstorming with representatives of the ICH forum earlier this year. Some ideas and issues are the following. Review number one, reviewing the governance of the NGO network to see how it can develop into a more institutional presence with permanent focal points. Two, ensuring feedback to NGOs whose applications are not approved. Three, mapping of the current NGO network would be useful to determine the capacities and scope of contributions that accredited NGOs can provide to the processes and mechanisms of the 2003 convention this may need a possible classification system in terms of national, regional, or international activities or advocacies. Four, capacity building for NGOs would be important, including through a possible MOOC to raise awareness and participation in the 2003 convention. Five, incentives could be considered to address the lack of equitable geographic balance in the NGO network and promote establishment of NGOs in other regions. One idea was making a portion of the international assistance budget available for accredited NGOs or creating a new budget line or fund. Another suggestion was linking inscriptions on the representative list or urgent safeguarding list with establishment of NGOs. Six, establishment of category two centers that could enhance engagement with accredited NGOs. Seven, in terms of the inter alia advisory services besides membership in the evaluation body, providing inputs to the new results framework in periodic reporting that was mentioned. And lastly, some member states express interest in developing a code of conduct for accredited NGOs. The NGO network was looking into this matter through a working group on the ethical principles for safeguarding ICH. We support the draft decision with a minor amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other member would like to make any remark or intervention? Netherlands, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The delegation of the Netherlands appreciates the role of NGOs in the implementation of this convention. They play an important intermediary role in strengthening the communities in participative participative approaches involving communities on the local, regional, national, and international level in capacity building of communities and in sharing safeguarding experiences. We welcome the ongoing transparent reflection process and consultations in the open-ended working group and between the open-ended working group, the Secretariat, and the ICH NGO Forum on the possible future roles of accredited NGOs so that we all could benefit more of the roles of NGOs between communities, groups and individuals, states parties and UNESCO. There is a wide variety of NGOs which are accredited, 
with, with all kinds of expertise, very valuable to this convention. And we think the reflection process on the possible roles has to find ways to map this expertise and to make it able to make use of it in a differentiated way. My delegation would like to emphasize the important role of accredited community NGOs with special expertise in specific types of RCH. Not all communities are represented in this way within the convention, but when they are, they can voice their expertise and member states could stimulate these NGOs to be accredited, especially from countries that are underrepresented in the NGO forum. Therefore, we think we need a system that is flexible and links the convention directly to communities and grassroots organizations, and at the same time is in line with the international community at large. Key for this is the improvement of the governance of the ICH NGO forum. This year, for the first time, the elected steering committee will start, and we hope that these developments in the governance will help facilitate the process in such a way that the working groups of the NGO Forum can focus on strengthening the outreach of the Convention to civil society, regional networking, contributing to the overall results framework and reports. We hope that the NGO and RCH Forum's strategy of regional networking and cooperation will contribute to the involvement and accreditation of NGOs from countries and regions in the world which are underrepresented in the NGO forum, because this is still the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Netherlands. Cuba. Gracias, señora presidenta. Eh, nuestra delegación desea agradecer por la información presentada. Nos parece que es un tema de especial importancia, sobre todo en el contexto que vive hoy la UNESCO, donde eh, a partir de toda la transformación estratégica se busca reflexionar sobre la participación de las ONG y de la sociedad civil de manera general en la organización, sin renunciar al carácter intergubernamental que tiene la UNESCO y que por supuesto también tienen, esta, tienen estas convenciones y nuestra convención. Sin embargo, es fundamental estimular el diálogo entre la sociedad civil y los estados parte de la convención y debemos trabajar por mejorar esos mecanismos que hoy eh, hacen mucho más eh, invisible la presencia o la participación de las ONG. Eh, un ejemplo que ha sido realmente positivo es ver cómo la Convención de Diversidad Cultural ha podido articular todo un, todo una, un recurso, toda una red en torno a las eh, ONG y también un poco desmitificar que solamente sean ONGs con un trabajo de investigación, sino también aquellas que tienen una labor mucho más comunitaria podrían estar presentes, aunque eh, quizás no trabajen con toda de manera muy directa el patrimonio inmaterial, pero tienen una participación directa con las comunidades y pueden ayudar al levantamiento, a los inventarios, a un trabajo mucho más comunitario sin perder eh, la esencia de lo que es la Convención de Patrimonio Inmaterial. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Austria? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Well, we would also like to thank the um, Secretariat as well as the informal ad hoc working group for this important initiative uh, that concerns various articles of the Convention as well as the NGO, ICH NGO Forum for its active engagement and participation in this process. We also welcome the multi-step consultation approach uh, nonetheless, the small number of states parties, as well as the geographically, geographically unbalanced distribution of NGOs that participated in the electronic consul consultation, which is uh, clearly related also to the geographical distribution of the accredited NGOs in general, have to be taken into consideration when we interpret the outcomes uh, during the consultation meeting. I also um, support the statements of the delegations of the Philippines and the Netherlands that the committee may wish to promote accreditation in underrepresent, underrepresented regions with a view to strengthening international cooperation as outlined in Article 19. And in this regard, we welcome the proposal of the working group concerning possible ways in which the participation of NGOs could further be enhanced, for example, by providing capacity building opportunities. We suggest that this topic is reflected upon in the upcoming consultation meeting. 
Um, as mentioned in the report, around half of the respondents considered that the accreditation system should include different types of accreditation. And I would like to ask for a clarification what form these different types of accreditation would take and also what is the, the reasoning uh, behind this proposal, if possible. Thank you. Thank you. Senegal? Merci, Madame la Présidente. Uh, C'est une question extrêmement importante euh, euh, à deux niveaux. Les ONG jouent un rôle extrêmement important sur le terrain. Et si nous allons dans un cas comme l'Afrique, en tout cas dans, dans, dans des régions que moi je connais mieux, les ressources humaines sont très limitées au niveau des ministères. On n'a pas beaucoup de ressources humaines pour faire tout le travail sur le terrain avec les communautés. Les ONG deviennent des relais extrêmement importants, surtout quand ces ONG travaillent directement avec les communautés. Nous avons besoin, nous, de ces ONG. Et tout le travail que nous faisons, en tout cas depuis au moins une dizaine d'années, dans la plupart des régions du Sénégal, nous, les, nous faisons ce travail avec les ONG. Mais il y a un problème de déséquilibre de participation des ONG par pays. C'est vrai, si nous prenons le cas du Sénégal, il y avait peut-être une ONG qui était là pendant quelques temps et qui a disparu. Aujourd'hui, nous travaillons avec des ONG dans l'inventaire, dans, 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 dans l'animation au niveau des communautés, et pourtant ces ONG ne sont pas là. Donc nous avons aussi une responsabilité, nous, en tant qu'administratifs, en tant que techniciens, en tant qu'experts, nous devons encourager ces ONG qui ne connaissent peut-être pas le réseau des ONG du patrimoine immatériel, bien qu'ils travaillent avec nous, ils ne savent même pas comment il faut faire une accréditation, comment il faut venir. C'est pourquoi, après la conférence générale de l'année passée, quand on a vu qu'il y avait à peine un seul pays, Zimbabwe, je crois, qui avait une accréditation, nous, nous avons décidé au Sénégal de travailler avec les ONG. Et il y a déjà trois ONG qui ont commencé à préparer tous leurs leur documents pour, si vous voulez, déposer leurs demandes. Et je pense que c'est dans ce sens qu'il faut s'inscrire si on veut régler également la question de la représentativité au niveau géographique. Nous avons un rôle à jouer, à encourager les ONG, travailler avec ces ONG, surtout que nous les connaissons, nous travaillons avec eux sur le terrain. Je pense que c'est ce que je voulais vraiment donner comme exemple que nous vivons au Sénégal, mais qui est également, euh, si vous voulez, vécu dans la plupart des pays africains, en tout cas moi, comme moi je connais. On est sous-représentés au niveau des ONG. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Curtis, please. Thank you. I think um, we had a couple of questions and I'll try to address and I, indeed uh, also I thank the Philippines. I understand a lot of these points are in the document coming up under the informal uh, working group report, which is why we didn't include them in this report. Um, they are being treated. Um, the, one of the questions is why the different levels of accreditation and, the, and there are issues concerning geographic uh, uh, representation, uh, representation. It is true that uh, it would be a good idea to send uh, to a broader group of NGOs a questionnaire. I am not sure if they would actually relate to these issues of accreditation and advisory functions to the committee. And um, because if they are not already uh, approaching the, the committee, it's a language that is probably not one that they're working a lot in those who are at least on the ground working. We have sent letters to national commissions asking for uh, stimulating requests from NGOs. And I think this comes to the second point, is why do we think about these accreditations and why, what is this about? And the, the issue at the beginning was the, the convention, the operational directors foresee for advisory functions inter alia. And I remind that the only advisory function in any true sense seems to be uh, at the moment that's defined is the evaluation body role in any clear way. And that as the Secretariat preparing for the committee's renewal of the evaluations based on the criteria, it becomes complicated and unclear on what is actually the criteria uh, for renewal. So this was why last year these, this consultation was initiated. I think it is still only very preliminary. I think the idea of broadening it beyond uh, those NGOs that are accredited is a good one, although we may need to broaden it in a, in a different kind of way uh, than the, the particular survey we sent. Um, 
uh, and I don't know if I've answered all of those questions. Thank you. Uh, we'll move now to the observers to hear from them. Belgium, please. Thank you very much. The Belgian delegation would like to thank the Secretariat and the Committee for this active exploration of the possibilities for accredited NGOs to contribute to the success in implementing this convention. We look forward to the results of the survey and the reflections. We would in any case again recall a decision already taken by the Intergovernmental Committee in the Windhoek meeting, decision 10 com 15 a.9, 10 and 11, that it is included in this exploration of the inter alia functions. And we do hope that inspiration is found in this decision when developing the work on the overall results framework. Thank you. Thank you. I see we have no more plates raised. Where? OK, please. And state the name of your NGO, please. Okay, uh, I will be speaking on behalf of the ICH NGO Forum. Um, I'm your Ernering from uh, Workshop in Intangible Heritage Flanders. The ICH NGO Forum is very happy with the transparency and the dialogue and the reflection on how the participation of NGOs could be further enhanced and how this will be reflected in the future accreditation process. We look forward to learn from the online consultation results and to reflect along with the secret Secretariat and the informal ad hoc working group towards the recommendation and decision to be made at 14 com. We share the observations being expressed in the document and by the delegate of the Philippines reporting from the meeting in June, among other, about efforts needed on geographical distribution and working through capacity building. As being said in our speech earlier this week, the NGO forum has been working firmly for performance in its governance in the recent years. As a result, this Wednesday, the first fully elected steering committee could be presented. Members come from each of the six regions along with a member representing the international NGOs to maximize our governance structure and guarantee good participation. A document on ethical principles has been prepared at this session and we are working on an ethics action plan as well as, as, well as on a code of conduct for steering committee members. From its side, the forum is also taking initiatives for consultation on the role of NGOs inter alia for the implementation of the convention. Three NGO meetings in 2018 were especially devoted to the inter alia process, among which also the forum's annual symposium this Sunday, with over 90 participants from both NGOs, states parties, and other actors in the convention. It is proposed to map the possible contributions of NGOs in alignment with functions of the committee, Article 7 of the Convention, and with the overall results framework. Dear Chairperson and committee members, NGOs form indeed a rich resource feeding the implementation of the Convention to its full potential. NGOs take up roles of mediation and facilitation with respect to cultivating local to global safeguarding processes in ICH. This has been highlighted before in your debates and it is also mentioned in the Operational Directive's chapter on sustainable development. Regarding the possible advisory functions of the accredited NGOs, we have already identified five new dimensions, adding to the evaluation role in the evaluation body currently. One, NGOs may serve as a laboratory of ideas and inspiring practices for raising and discussing new issues in relation to societal changes, highlighting critical aspects in safeguarding methodologies and procedures. 
This often happens through transnational cooperation and effective networking of NGOs and building connections also with other actors like research institutes, civil society and other partners. Such cross-border collaboration of NGOs, for example, is the case in the dry stone walling listed at this session for the new registered good practice of the storytelling network of Kronoberg yesterday or the ICH and museums project in Europe started by accredited NGOs with support with the forum. Second, an obvious NGO role lies in contributing to the safeguarding of ICH. NGOs contribute to safeguarding measures and methodologies in general or of specific elements of ICH, whether or not inscribed, as well as for the follow-up on inscribed elements. Third, NGOs are well equipped to share safeguarding experiences in lighter and accessible ways. A nice example is the online platform nordicsafeguardingpractices.org in which accredited NGOs are very much playing a vital role as well as the Heritage Alive online journal of the forum on its website. Fourth, the role of NGOs for awareness raising on ICH and safeguarding in society and for building and strengthening capacities, capacities with stakeholders at large. And fifth, a diversity of reporting functions serving the committee and the overall results framework, regional reporting, status of inscribed elements and other. This being said, we hope we can further enrich the reflection on future function for NGOs in the Convention and that as a result of the consultation process will a set of valuable functions that amplify the implementation of the Convention in future years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move now to adopting the decision. Can we see it on screen, please? I don't think, I, I can see no amendments. Philippines. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. It's just an amendment to paragraph five, um, and it's just um, a reference to the informal ad hoc working group, which we will take up later, and many, of, uh, many speakers uh, referred to. So our amendment would be after ICH NGO forum, comma, the informal open-ended ad hoc working group. Thank you. Can we adopt the first four paragraphs? I see no objection. The paragraph one, two, three, and four are adopted. Let's go over paragraph five. Okay, I request that the Secretariat continue the reflection with accredited non-governmental organizations, the ICH, NGO Forum, and we have the amendment from the Philippines, the informal ad hoc open-ended working group, and state parties to the definition of the advisory functions to be fulfilled by accredited non-governmental organizations, and that it present the result of such reflection and proposals for the revision of the accreditation system at its 14th session. Um, any objections to the introduced amendment, suggested amendment by Philippines? None? Okay, adopted. Can we adopt the whole draft decision now, please? Okay, adopted, thank you very much. Um, and please, before we leave the room, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Curtis for some practical announcements. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. During lunch break, information sessions on safeguarding intangible cultural heritage and formal and non-formal education will take place in the Castro room on the first floor. There are two sessions scheduled consecu consecutively, the first one held in English from 1.30 p.m. and the second one in French from 2 p.m. Thank you, and we'll see you at 2.30. Thank you very much. Bye.